friends, new and old, family, and muses, I sing for you tonight of Hestia, keeper of the state, bringer of peace, and goddess of light, love, and the hearth. Hestia stood at the dawn of a new age of her own making. She and her siblings, the new Olympians, had finally toppled the generation before them and stood at an age of freedom. Hestia had shared the light of her fire with Prometheus, the father of man, and it had spread like fire does through all of humans. And small campfires were becoming villages, which were becoming cities. Humans were spreading and growing, and the gods looked at that and started to get ideas. You know, gods were kind of pretty. They looked at each other, they were checking each other out. You know, they found their people. Zeus, the youngest of the gods, found Hera, his sister, but they're Olympians, it's fine. You know, there weren't a lot of them. And a courtship began. Hera was taken with the idea of being the queen of the gods. She was taken with the position, and she loved the idea of this man, Zeus, the lord of the sky, beautiful and brave. But Zeus was not the god of loyalty. That was not on his list of tasks. And Hera missed that. Now, their older sister, Hestia, she saw the chaos that was spreading and said, you know, these people are going to need someone to take care of them. I'm going to lay off this whole love thing. I'm not going to have kids of my own. I'm going to take care of my siblings' children. And I'll look after these crazy humans and do what I can. But I really think this kid thing is not for me. But I'm excited for nieces and nephews. Now, Zeus... He started roaming around humans, and he kind of forgot about Hera entirely. And he found himself in Africa, and he heard singing from a garden. And he didn't want to show himself as Zeus, for that was dangerous for mortals. So he said, well, she's in a garden. What won't this girl be afraid of? I'll become a little snake. That'll be fine. <laughs> and so he becomes a little snake, and he slithers towards this girl singing, and uh, she screams. She screams. And... He turns into a beautiful young man and explains to her that he is Zeus, the lord of the sky, and that he's in love with her. And she's pretty freaked out by this. <laughs> she's not really okay with it. But they go for a lot of walks, and over time she begins to fall in love with this man, this stranger who came to her garden. Now Zeus goes back and forth and back and forth, and he's back at Olympus. And what he doesn't realize is that Hera has known the whole entire Time. and she has been planning and she one day when Zeus is busy off north goes to Africa as an old crone and she approaches this princess named Samil when she's on the way to market and says Samil I am a seller of potions are you struggling with morning sickness or your baby kicking and Samil gasps for no one knows no one knows that Samil is pregnant and Samil says I'm not looking for that. Please be quiet. No one knows. And Hera says, Oh, well, I won't tell anyone. Who's the father? And Samil says, In a moment that is not understandable, she decides to tell the truth. Maybe it's just because sometimes when we have a secret, we need to tell somebody. We need to get, up, get it off our chest. And she tells this old crone, The father is Zeus the king of the gods. And Hera says, <laughs> that's a silly trick. I can't believe you fell for that. You thought he was the king of the gods. She said, no, no, he was a snake. And then he was a man. And Hera says, <laughs> that could be any conjurer of cheap tricks or some sorcerer wandering the streets. You need to ask for Zeus in his true form. Then you'll know. And Samil says, oh, who's this crazy lady? Who's this crazy lady? I just need to forget about that. Zeus loves me, I know he's Zeus, but she can't get it out of her mind. And the next time Zeus comes to visit her, she says, Zeus, 
If you love me, do you swear on the river sticks that you will do anything for me? And Zeus says, of course, of course, I would do anything for you. And she says, then show me your true form. And Zeus is devastated because mortals cannot bear to look at a god in their true form. And he goes and he finds the smallest lightning bolts and the tiniest thunderclouds he can. And he assumes his form because he swore on the river Styx. And she sees his burning light and she is ripped apart. All of her body is thrown across the room in its force. And all that is left is a small baby that was too young to be born. And Zeus picks up this baby and is in a moment of desperation. He takes his thunderbolt and he strikes a hole in his own thigh, puts the baby in it, turns Samil's body into a vine, stitches it up, puts his toga back on, and goes up to Olympus. And then the baby's ready to be born and he calls it Dionysus and he loves this child, half mortal, half god. And he knows Hera will kill it, and that baby does not deserve it. So he break, takes it to a bunch of nymphs. Hera finds the nymphs. He takes them to some dryads. Hera finds the dryads. He takes them to his mom, Rhea. Hera comes to his mom, Rhea, as a dragon. And Zeus is like, who do I bring this baby to? Who do I bring this baby to? Who can take care of this baby? My sister Hestia. My sister Hestia. And so Hestia takes the baby and quickly loves Dionysus. Quickly loves this small child who's a bundle of joy and loves to eat. And he's got this little vine that he has with him and he carries it around and he grows very fast because gods grow really fast. By a week, he's 14 years old and he's planted this vine in the ground and he's watering it and little grapes are growing from it. And Hera finds out and she is not happy. She thinks her sister has betrayed her and she comes as a dragon and Hestia is terrified because Hestia, powerful though she is in her way, is not a god of strength. That's not her for her, that's not her strength. She can't win a fight. And she looks at Dionysus and says, I don't know what he, we're gonna do. And he says, I've been playing with these grapes. And I can do some fun things with them. And I've been drinking it, and it kind of feels like a fire inside my body. I'm a pretty big fan. But also, like, sometimes it gets clear, and I've got an idea. I'm going to throw it at your fire. You just do your best to scare Hera, okay? And Hera comes, and Hestia says, okay, okay, here goes nothing. Hera, I am a goddess of fire, and I am your older sister. And if you come this way, I will tear your dragon body apart. And she holds up a small stick. And she waves it around and hopes Dionysus is going to do something. And then a spray of this liquid sprays all over her fire and explodes like nothing has ever exploded. And Hera turns and she flees. And Dionysus and Hestia laugh. And they drink a little bit. And it's kind of fun. And they sit there. Dionysus is aged seven years. He's 21 now. And... <laughs> Hera and Zeus finally have their own child, a boy named Hephaestus. And Hera's content to forget about this lad who is Dionysus. And Hephaestus is born, their perfect child, finally a child of their union. And Hera looks at this baby, and his face is deformed and ugly and horrible. And his body is lame and broken. And she hurls him off of Mount Olympus in disgust. And he flies, and he flies, and he flies, and he crash lands in a volcano. And his already mangled body is completely broken. He cannot feel his legs. And he thinks he's going to stay there and do the Olympian version of dying, whatever that is. And then a small voice an older sister comes from the lava and says, look to the fire, Hephaestus. Look to the fire and use your hands and see what you can make. And Hephaestus reaches and he grabs the lava and he begins to fashion a sort of chair for himself, a sort of chair that he can move around. And then he begins to weave a net, a beautiful golden net. And he pushes and he gets all the way back to Mount Olympus 
and the Olympian gods are so happy to see this new strong man who's arrived and he gets to the front and he says mom dad I have a present for you I've worked really hard on it it's beautiful and he throws the net at Hera and it pins her to her throne and she can't move and he leaves he leaves he says okay guys I'm done I'm going back to my volcano this was fun see you later and the gods don't know what to do they cannot move this net Hera's shape-shifting like crazy trying to get out and it just keeps moving keeps adjusting she is trapped and Hestia says you know I've got this crazy idea I have this boy Dionysus he's super nice he and Hephaestus are brothers let's send Dionysus to go talk to Hephaestus and see what happens maybe Dionysus can convince Hephaestus to come back Dionysus makes the trip to the volcano brings a cask of that wine stuff and the two of them start drinking and Dionysus convinced Hephaestus that he should go back and free his mother and give her a second chance and maybe the family can come together around Hestia's father, fire. So the two go back, they get to Olympus, and they stand before all the gods, and Hera realizes the error of her ways. And Hestia says, of course, Hephaestus, you can have a seat with the Olympians. You can be the last of the twelve. And Hephaestus goes, whoa, that does not seem fair. Dionysus should be able to be here too. And Hera says, no, 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 he's half mortal. He's half mortal, that's no good. And Hephaestus says, I'm not gonna take my seat unless my brother gets a seat too. And Hera says, well, I guess we're SOL. I guess we're no dice. And Hestia gets very mad, quietly in the way that Hestia does. And she sits in her throne and she looks at Dionysus, this boy who she has raised, who does deserve a place at the table. That kind of festivity and that willingness to forgive is an integral part of what is going to keep their family together. And she gets up and she says, Hera, if those are the rules we play by, then Dionysus can have my chair. I'm going to sit by the fire, and I'm going to keep us warm. And Dionysus takes the chair, and that's where Hestia sits to this day, the only Olympian who is willing to give up her throne and recognize that power, if power matters, if power is a thing that affects humans and gods, that power is not a chair, and it's not a title, and it's not saying things and have people listening to you, and it's not force. Power is how much hope, love, and light we can share with others. Hestia is doing a pretty good job. And tonight, I ask you to remember all of the fires you've sat by, and all of the times that you have felt hope and love and light. And maybe dare to imagine that Hestia was there with you then, and that she is there with us now, tonight. Thank you. Woo!